Newly installed Virgin Australia boss Jane Herdlicker has confirmed thousands of airline jobs will be on the line if JobKeeper isn't extended. Around half of the airline's 6,000 staff are currently stood down and on JobKeeper, which the government has said will expire at the end of next month. Ms Herdlicker says the airline, which last year was bought out of administration by private equity firm Bain Capital, will compete with Qantas and Jetstar and keep Rex at bay. Jane Herdlicker, welcome to the program. So you've got around 3,000 uh, workers on JobKeeper now. What happens to them at the end of March if there is no extension uh, to it or another program specifically for airline workers? Today we've got 3,000 people stood up and we're at roughly 35% capacity. We'd hope to be at 60% today. We can shut... Um, capacity off, but building capacity back up is pretty tough. And that's a difficult thing for the economy because it's not a couple days to hire people, train people and get them back on the line. It's several months. And so, so the implications if you don't, for the so, economy aren't great. But the implications for those workers are if you don't have an extension to JobKeeper or something similar at the end of March, you will let those workers go. Well, we've got a strong balance sheet, Lisa, and we'll have decisions to make. But because there's no crystal ball on what will happen with borders and how effective the rollout of vaccinations will be and how confident we'll be as a country to take the right decisions to enable Australians to get back in the air, we'll have to make tough decisions uh, to ensure that we don't weaken the balance sheet um, by being confident about something that we can't predict. So what would your message be to those workers who are currently employed by Virgin but sitting on, uh, but stood down uh, and receiving JobKeeper? We're doing everything we can to ensure that we can maintain the flexibility to get every one of you back to work. Turning to the airline, uh, a major challenge ahead for you uh, still rests with the workers. You have uh, outstanding enterprise agreements with your cabin crew and your pilots. Will you commit to sitting down uh, with those staff to negotiate an outcome? We're already in the process of working through um, the issues and, and the challenges with respect to the agreements that were initially on the table. The cost envelope won't be any bigger, but we're of course all ears and working together um, collaboratively with the unions to make sure we're making the right trade-offs on behalf of our people as we construct the next agreement. Because speaking with uh, people involved with the negotiations or with the, with the unions, uh, there seems to be a fairly good truce at the moment uh, between Virgin uh, and the unions. How long do you think you can maintain that given the cost pressures that you've got, but also the expectations that the workers have of maintaining pay and conditions? I think we're quite aligned uh, because the simple priority is getting as many people back to work as possible. We've got many employees who have very specialised skills and there, there isn't another um, industry for them to go to to be able to use those skills. That gives you a pretty good and bargaining chip, the entire though. industry... Well, look, the entire industry has to rebuild demand. So we'll all work together to keep fares as low as possible, to make it irresistible to travel, to get Australians moving across the country again. Rex made it clear it wants to put you out of business. Uh, it's going to have a much lower cost base, uh, particularly on the wages front. It says it's going to pay workers 10% below Jetstar. That's, the, that's pretty much the bottom. That's going to be pretty competitive uh, for you, isn't it? We still have a lot of work yet to do, but we're fighting fit. And I, I don't really buy the fact that um, Rex is going to come into the market with a structurally better cost position uh, than either Jetstar or Virgin. Um, I think it'll be a very competitive market for some time, and we're up for the challenge. We're you know, going to be roughly 33% of the market. We've been Australia's most loved airline. We've got two decades of experience serving guests who know and trust us, and we're not going anywhere. You've said that Virgin will be a mid-market airline, not a full-service one like Qantas, but not budget like Jetstar. What will be changing on a Virgin flight for someone who flew from 2019, they get back on a plane now, what will be different? There won't be a lot different. I think what our guests will see is a lot of investment going into technology and they'll see us stop doing things that they didn't ever really understand. Like what? Uh, we're activating uh, just things like with, um, with some of our lounges, we had too much space. We had too many lounges. Uh, we've reduced the footprint so that it's the lounges in the cities that really matter.
And is that what, Not yet is that what, is that what mid-market means? Well, mid-market means we're going to provide the very best experience um, at a sharp price point. What is that so price point? So we're not looking to... Well, the price point means that we will be um, very competitive with Jetstar, we'll be always super competitive with Qantas. Qantas has always been um, you know, the most premium in the marketplace, and they'll hang on to that position. And, you know, we've got a nice spot where the majority of consumers are. majority of consumers want to have bells and whistles, but they don't want to pay for a lot of extras that they don't use. So what will you be aiming to be? What percentage cheaper than Qantas or what percentage uh, more expensive than Jetstar do you think people will pay? It'll always be different market by market because it just depends on the competitive dynamics at a given point in time. And for a while, at least, I don't think you'll be able to tell a lot of difference between many of the carriers on price point because it will just be very competitive as we stimulate the market to get passengers back in the air. So prices will be cheaper than they've been in a long time as long as the airlines have the ability to keep our staff, who are stood down now, ready to come back to work. Jane Hurdlicker, thank you very much for joining the program. My pleasure.